you. Let's deal, first of all, with the businesses. We're going into a strategic review of global services. What does that really mean? How long will it take? When can we expect your version, the new version of global services to be delivered? Well, we've undertaken the review already uh, and come to a number of conclusions. OK. First and foremost, global services is an important business for BT. Um, but we recognize that the market is changing, technology is changing, and we need to change the business. So we're announcing today uh, a transformation of the cost base, a simplifying of the operating model, and a real focus on our global customers, which may mean we won't focus as much on the domestic business outside of the UK. So what does that mean for bits of the business you're going to hang on to and bits of the business you're going to sell? Because some people had asked whether all of the geographies that this business is in made sense. Well, what is clear is that our, our global customers, uh, around 200 of them, we have a very good business with them. We've got good relationships, a very strong portfolio. That's going to be our focus. We'll increasingly invest in uh, platforms that use the cloud and use the, the global network. And then over time, we'll, we'll deprioritize some of the local businesses. Um, and that may, in time, mean that we um, dispose of one or two. But there's, that's not part of today's So you're not answer. making an announcement today about no, selling Italy, for example, because people had said, given what's happened there, would that be one of the first bits no, to go? Uh, what we're doing is we can transform Italy. We need to, to fix it. There's a turnaround plan in place. We've got new management in place. And that's what we're focused on today. Um, let, let's get to one, one of the issues here, Gavin. You uh, have had a review of, of your own remuneration in terms of your annual bonus. What, what is that sending to... The, is that message from you to the shareholders to the investors in your business i mean that's taking it where it hits your own pocket what's the message well i, I believe as the ceo you need to set an example so i'd signal to the board back in january when uh, when we announced the uh, problems in italy that i felt it would be inappropriate to take a bonus if if one was due uh, and that's what you can see in today's today's announcement i think as a ceo you need to be uh, setting an example for everybody across the business, and uh, so I'm, I, I completely support this decision. Can I ask you, have you got full support from all of your shareholders? How rankled are they? Give us a sense of the conversations you've had with the shareholders. Look, shareholders are, are disappointed uh, in, in terms of what, what has happened in Italy in particular, but they support the strategy, uh, and there are a number of things that have also gone very well this year. Uh, so we've now resolved our future in terms of regulation. We've got a uh, uh, an enduring settlement with Ofcom that gives us a platform to grow the business. We're announcing today a consultation around uh, the potential to invest even more in FTTP, uh, so fibre to the premise beyond our existing plans, uh, which we'll be doing through OpenReach. And uh, investors seem to be supportive of that as well. So, you know, it's, it has been a challenging year, there's no doubt about yeah. that, but mm. the underlying business is strong, it's performing well. Um, and now that we can put the likes of our Italian issue behind us, uh, which we think we can, we can go on and, and, and set the business up for future growth. Tell us a bit more about the uh, fibre to the premises than the FTP uh, consultation that you're running here, because uh, is it something like 2% of UK buildings have access to fibre connections? And BT's always talked about getting more out of the copper infrastructure. So is this a change in direction? What, what, what do you expect uh, uh, to learn through this? Yeah, well, we've always said we shouldn't be fixated on any one technology. We should let the market uh, really figure out what the best technology is. So we're already rolling out a technology called GFAST, um, which will get to 10 million premises by 2020 with speeds of you know, around half a gigabit per second, which is, which is pretty significant. Uh, however, we want to understand whether the market wants to go beyond that. And to go beyond that speed, we think you'd need to take what's known as full fiber or go all the way into the premise. We have around 2 million of uh, premises uh, within our existing plans, uh, but we'll be consulting the market today through OpenReach um, to understand whether or not CPs would support going beyond that. And um, we're looking at a number of around 10 million premises by 2025. So who's asking for this? Is this political pressure? Is this uh, some of the other companies that you supply who want you to, who OpenReach supplies that want this to happen? Well, Where's the impetus coming there from? Was, there was a lot of uh, commentary during the, the Ofcom strategic review um, around FTTP and comparisons with other markets. So we felt the right thing to do was to consult the market and see whether or not there's real demand that could be underpinned by our customers. 
Uh, and so through the new governance structure that we've got around Openreach, we see it as a perfect opportunity to see whether or not that's the, really the case. Where are we with pricing in the UK? You talk about making this additional, this additional investment, the, the additional capital expenditure. Would you concur, I think one of the analysts out there said, that there are cracks appearing in the UK telecoms market and we're starting to look, sorry, cracks in terms of pricing, they're beginning <laughs> to look like chasms. I mean, you're at the coal face. How, would you share that view? Talk to me about pricing. I think <coughs> what I'm seeing is, that, you know, consumers expect better value, um, and uh, they're becoming much more canny about shopping around to get to get that value. It's not all about being the cheapest price in the market. Um, it's about often being more for more. And I think you can see in our consumer businesses that is a strategy that's working for us, you know, both on the E brand and and the BT brand. So I think putting through. You know, just straight price rises without increasing the value you offer or the yeah. service you offer for customers. You know, those days have long since gone. You mentioned one of the uh, the achievements of 2017 was around the open reach uh, deal, and you said it was you know, long standing, or, or, or you used a word earlier to describe how it would it would last. Just how long lasting is this going to be? Do you think this is completely put to bed? How long before some of the companies that use open reach start asking once again, hang on a second, we need even more separation of open reach from BT? Well, what we've proposed and uh, what was agreed is, is a governance structure around OpenReach, which is at arm's length from the rest of the group. You know, the, the requirements are in place to ensure that we can meet our judiciary responsibilities and legal responsibilities, but apart from that, OpenReach management report to an independent board that uh, reports to uh, the group board. Uh, and they have a, a high degree of uh, independence around the, the, uh, within a framework, the budget that we set uh, for them. Um, they were able to consult on a, a private basis with CPs and develop new business models such as co-investment uh, and that's what the market wants. So we will continue to invest. Investment in open reach has gone up 30% um, over the last two years. We want to go further and if the market will sustain that uh, we're prepared to step so up. So Sky and others won't ask for any more uh, independence? Well, I think, you know, I think the proof will be in the eating, as they say, if we deliver, if we deliver on service and deliver on investment, uh, I, I believe this will be a sustainable talk, model for us. I want to talk to you about the pension side of the business. This is, take, take us forward because you're going into review, there's going to be a lot of haggling, um, there's going to be demands for more money, more cash infusions to bring down the deficit. It's, it's always a hard balance, isn't it, between the dividend and the cash that you may have to put into the pension. Have you any sense of the figures that we could deal with and, and, and is the dividend under threat? Uh, look, we're just entering a triannual review here um, and uh, so it's normal to, the, to be an awful lot of speculation. I, I think it's too early to... And you're the man that can tell us just exactly <laughs> the size of the speculation. I think it's too early to, to draw any conclusions. I mean, as normal, we will look at the, the amount of cash we put into the, to the bonus. We'll also look at the benefits that, um, sorry, the, the pension rather. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll also look at the, uh, the benefits that we provide for pensioners. And, you know, we're a strong company. We can afford to support the pension. We see that as a very important uh, responsibility uh, as a board. But we can also pay dividends. We've increased our dividend 10%, um, uh, which was slightly ahead of consensus, as you said earlier. Um, and we can invest in the business for the future. It's been a tough year, Gavin, hasn't it? Or tough uh, developments on many fronts. 2017, how does it look uh, as if it's going to develop? Does it get better for you from here? Well, it's been a challenging year, there's no question about that. And uh, there have been things like Italy that have, uh, have, have been setbacks. Uh, but also, the underlying business is strong. And we've got a good market position. Um, we're investing in the network, as I say. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm really confident about the future of the business. Can I ask you just one very final question? Because many people in the market w w will ask this, which is, are you susceptible? Are you in a strong... You, look, you've gone through a tough couple of months. Is BT susceptible to a bid? Well, I, you can never say you're completely uh, uh, immune from, uh, 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 from a, a takeover, I guess. But what I'm confident of is that we've got a clear strategy that our... Uh, shareholders support, as I say, a good market position. We're clear where we can invest to grow for the future. Okay. Um, so I'm just focused on that and, uh, and uh, looking forward to delivering on it.